All right, it's a cloudy, gloomy, muggy, overcast day here in South Louisiana. And being that it's the month of February, it's got me thinking about one species. It's a fish that most people know is crappie. We here in South Louisiana call sockele. And these conditions are perfect for catching them. Now, sockele are a blast to catch, but the best thing about them is eating them. They are delicious. And whenever I go fishing for them on the river here near my house, I always bump into a few other species. Sometimes brim, sometimes catfish, sometimes small bass, all of which are really, really good to eat as well. And if you watch this channel for a while, you know that I love to cook, particularly fish. And so whatever I catch today, we're gonna come back here and I got a great dish that you're gonna love. Now it's time to hitch up the boat and go get the main ingredient. Well, I'm the only boat that launched today. That's highly unusual, particularly this time of year. Hopefully it's not a bad omen. All right, so the water looks really, really good in here. It is up a little bit, but in these dead ends, oftentimes it gets very, very clear. And that's how it is today. So I'm starting with this Cajun Lures little Sockele jig. Not sure what color they call it. It kind of looks like Popsicle. I like that color, particularly in really pretty water. Start about maybe two and a half feet down below my tiny little cork. The wind's blowing just a little bit. It's supposed to really pick up today, though. Blow 15 to 20 by the end of the day. Kind of protected right here, but still, it's a lot easier without the wind blowing. Water temp today is 67 degrees. <laughs> That's got to get these sockle inspired to both spawn and feed. No, oh, what is that? Oh, that's some. Oh, it's a catfish. Look at this. <laughs> All right. Something to put on the dinner plate. Not our target species, but we will take him. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. Oh. Saw you take me down to Chinatown. Well, that promised wind is picking up, no doubt about it. Oh, there's one. There's a sockele. There's a nice one. All right, all right. Success. That's what we came for. Not a bad fish. Give you a little company. Oh, Todd. I saw that fish. There's a fish. Another catfish. Look at this. Oh, much better one. Much better catfish. We will be eating well. Messed up my hook, bruh. He destroyed my bait, bent my jig head, but it was worth it. So these are these Cajun lures I'm using. Let's see if they have the color on here. Electric chicken. Okay, well, that makes sense. And they definitely reek. Ooh, they smell of garlic. Probably why we catch so many catfish on them. It's got kind of a little paddle tail on it. Gives it some decent action in the water. 
I don't know what it is about this. Doing this light tackle fishing, watching a cork this time of year is just, it's just awesome. It's so relaxing, low stress, and sometimes the action can be lights out. But even days like today, where we're just putting a few fish in the boat. I don't know, they're just good for the soul. They just really are. Good for the mental health. There's an old adage among crappie fishermen that these fish feed up. Their eyes are kind of oriented toward the top of their heads and they tend to rise to baits rather than go down to baits. So whenever you're doing this, you're not getting a lot of bites. You definitely want to, oh, oh, missed him. You definitely want to try shorten your cork a little bit, which I have not done yet, but I'm definitely thinking about it. And Sakale have a unique signature when they hit a jig under a cork. Sometimes it'll plunge and run forever. But most of the time it moves under maybe an inch or so. Sometimes it just goes flat because a fish will hit the bait and move up and take the weight off the cork. I'm gonna go ahead and shorten up a little bit. All my hits have been on the fall or not at all. So that tells me I might be a little deep. Now, Sakale are one of those fish that will bite when they want to bite. And when they do want to bite, man, you can't keep them off the jig. It's just absolute insanity. Prior to that, you'll pick up one or two that you kind of con into biting. But I know there's fish around here. Hopefully the flip, the switch flips and they go crazy. But even if they don't, we'll just pick away at the ones that we can get to bite. There's one. Oh, come on, get in. There we go. All right. Now that's one where my cork actually came up. It had weight on it and then it just all of a sudden bounced up. Now this is a white crappie, kind of long and cylindrical, less wide than a black crappie. Boy, he took it deep. That's a good sign. Right, I'm gonna give this uh, black and green matrix mini a try. I think they call this kryptonite, but I'm not sure. I'll look it up to make sure. But Sakale are definitely color conscious. So let's see if they want this today. This is a cheap Mr. Crappie <laughs> rod. I think the whole outfit was like $20, $25. Bought it a few years ago. Definitely prefer that little cherry wood. Oh, what are you? Nice Sakale, nice one. Oh, shoot. <laughs> that was a pig. I had my drag a little loose. Mm -hmm. That hurts. Should have checked my drag. What a knucklehead. First time I used this since last year. What are you? Something big. This is something big. If this is a sockle, it's a slab. Nope, another catfish. <laughs> another catfish. <laughs> we are gonna eat well tonight. Perfect eating size too. There we go. Now with your buddies. All right, I reached my time limit, and that means it's time to head home. It set the world on fire today. Certainly did not execute well at all. Man, did I miss some fish. Just one of those days. But I got plenty enough for dinner, and that's going to allow me to show you a great way to cook these fish. When you start with ingredients as good as these, it's easy to do. But believe me, cooking them this way makes them extra tasty. Now, let me show you what we caught fish on today. We used the Cajun Lures. It's called a Slim Jimmy. As I mentioned, it's really, really stinky. Smells like garlic, but it's got some good tail action. This is the electric chicken color. Certainly something I'll probably use again. 
First time I used it was today. And we also caught fish on the Matrix Mini. This is an old standby for me. Been using it for a few years. It's always productive. This, I think, is kryptonite color. And both of them we used on 132nd ounce jig heads. This one's painted orange. That's kind of my standard go-to when fishing under a cork. If you're going to fish tight line, you definitely want to go with something a little bit heavier. 116, sometimes even 18. But right now, it's time to head to the house. Next time you see me, I'll be in my kitchen. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Matrix Shad. And by Versamax Corks. And by H&H &H Lure Company. And by Cito New Orleans. And by Death Grip Jig Heads. All right, so here I am in my kitchen. And if you've watched previous catching cooks that I've done, you notice it's a very different kitchen. That's because we moved. Well, actually, we're kind of in the process of moving. We've got most of our furniture still in the other house because it's staged being sold. So we're actually living on... I don't know, folding tables and folding chairs and pieces of sofas and stuff like that. Anyway, but welcome to my new kitchen. All right, so this dish, I'm so excited to show it to you. You're not gonna believe how good it is. It's a variation of a dish shown to me by my good fishing buddy, Justin Bowles. I've kind of changed it up a little bit, just suiting it for my family's taste but it's really good. And you only need just a very few ingredients and here they are. All right, first off, aluminum foil. Everybody's got that. Second, cooking spray. You could live without this, but it makes life a little easier. Third, we've got olive oil. Everybody's got that. Good old salt, good old pepper. It's garlic powder. And these are onion flakes, kind of chopped onions. You can also make do with just uh, onion salt, that's fine. Then we got Liam Perrin's Worcestershire sauce, definitely the best Worcestershire sauce. You can go with cheaper varieties, but Liam Perrin's is the best, trust me. And then uh, also optional is butter. All right, so I'm gonna kind of slide all these to the side because I need a little space on my counter. First thing we're gonna do is make foil boats. Now I have to make two separate ones of these because I don't have room in just one. So I'll make two actual foil boats and I'm not gonna put butter in mine. I'm gonna put it in Joel's and my wife's. So I'm gonna show you both variations. All right, so to make a foil boat, all you wanna do is just make sure the ends are higher than the middle so it doesn't leak any of the delicious fluid that we're about to make. The only problem is in the corners. Everything else is easy. All right, that's our foil boat. That's one of them. Let's make another one. All right, it's number two. I made this dish last night with some of these fillets. If you're watching this video, it's gonna look like all one day. It's actually two different days. I fished yesterday morning, made this last night, and now I'm gonna make it again tonight with the remainder of the fillets. And I can't wait, it's gonna be delicious. All right, I packed my fish in ice, like I always do. Of course, in a Ziploc bag, but packed in ice, keeps them so much fresher, so much tastier than if you just store them in the fridge. All right, remember I told you that cooking spray was optional? This is where it comes in handy. You don't need it. If you just pour olive oil in the pan, that's plenty enough. But I like to just coat the foil with, with a little bit of cooking spray. All right, some of these beautiful little sockele fillets. Whew, those are gonna be good. Catfish. Now you don't really wanna crowd the boat. You wanna leave a little bit of room between each fillet, but that ought to do it. All right, now we're gonna pour some olive oil into each of these pans. Not a ton in this one, because this one's gonna have some butter as well, but we do want a little bit of olive oil in there. This one, we're gonna need a little bit more. All right, after the olive oil, we put our Worcestershire sauce. Be sure and shake it up. I always wanna shake Worcestershire sauce. It all settles to the bottom, all the good stuff. Put a generous amount on each filet. And then we're gonna put our seasoning. First off is our salt. Now if you use onion salt, you definitely wanna use less of the table salt. Now we got the pepper. And I tell you, all of these ingredients are important. If you don't have one of them, you can, you can make do without it. It's not gonna kill the dish, but each one has a unique depth of flavor. My hands are kind of oily. This is the, uh, the garlic powder. All right, next up is the chopped onion. Very, very important ingredient. As I said, onion salt will work, but this stuff is really good. All right, and on Joel's and my wife's, I'm gonna put some butter. Not a ton, but a little bit. A few little pats. All right, and believe it or not, that is it. 
About 20 minutes ago, I lit my grill. It should be really hot by now, and it's 100% ready to receive these foil boats with these fish, and they're gonna cook really, really quickly. All right, I really like to get my grill good and hot and cook these at a high temperature quickly. Now, this is really the hardest part of this deal, is getting these on the grill without spilling anything. You really can't make them too heavy. Ow, grill's hot. All right, whew, success. Okay, now I never ever time anything, just kind of go off a of feel. I'm guessing these are gonna be on there maybe four or five minutes, somewhere in there. Maybe six minutes, I don't know, we'll check them. If you check the thickest part of the fish with a fork, if it flakes at all, it's ready, take it off. All right, they've been on there four minutes, that's it, four minutes, and they smell incredible already. I can't wait to eat these, but I bet you they're close to done, I'm gonna check. Yeah, they're definitely close. I don't have a fork, but I do have this spatula. That's got a little bit of pushback, so that one's ready. These are definitely ready. That one's got a little pushback. That's ready. That's ready, ready, ready. Eh, it's not quite ready, really close. I'm gonna give them all about one more minute, that's it. All right, we're up to about five minutes now. I guarantee you they're done. Yep. Absolutely. All done. All right, now putting them on was a challenge. Getting them off is also a challenge. I definitely use a, a fish spatula. Slide a cookie sheet under it. All right, there we go. All right, about 20 minutes before I started the fish, I started a sweet potato hash. I made it with smoked ribeye sausage made by Captain Frank Dreher, and it's the best sausage I've ever had. Really, really good. So this ought to be delicious. This had actually only three ingredients, onion, sausage, and sweet potatoes, and it's definitely ready. All right, now it's time to eat. All right, I'm making Joel's dish because as always, He's my taste tester. A little char in the ends, but it'll be good. All right, Joel is unfailingly honest. He is quite the food critic, so we'll see what he thinks. It's delicious. Man, this is really, really good. All right, he says that I gotta believe it, and I know that it is. I can't wait to eat mine. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video and got a lot out of it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. If you haven't done so yet, click the join button so you become a member of Marshman Masson. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson. <laughs>